So here we are on uh, popular demand. People have asked about getting baths and trimming and blind nails. This is my 100% pet albino, um, El Salvador albino. I got this one about six months ago and she's grown three times her size. <clears throat> I haven't really done a lot of handling with her so it was a little bit. Anytime when you have a new iguana and you haven't handled them, you let them grow a little bit. It could be a good idea to bring the water temperature down a little bit and let them chill. Like literally chill for a second. And so as you can see, she did chill out. I, I got some scratches and stuff in the process and she's a little not real sure about this uh, camera in front of her. But we are going to do a bath time and a nail clipping. Baths are, you know, you got to remember the core temperature of an iguana is, is, is a cold blooded animal. They're comfortable at 82 degrees. That's when they'll start moving around uh, and start foraging for food. And, you know, so anywhere from 82 to 85 degrees is comfortable for them. You got to remember we're 98 degrees. So what seems to be lukewarm to us isn't necessarily lukewarm to her. So you can do a thermometer thing. I've always just tested it with my hand and it feel almost cool to touch. Usually means that's pretty good. And also the reaction to the iguana, you can see that it may seem painful if it's too cold. And if it's too warm, it can be, they cannot regulate their body temperature. So if you leave them in a bath that's 95 degrees, 100 degrees, which doesn't seem that much to us, they can actually get hot and have a stroke, a heat stroke. So also, it's time to give this one a good soaking because she has a couple of layers on her uh, dorsal spikes, as you can see right here, that I want to soak up and we're going to get off as well. This is weird. I know it's not one, two, three layers. It can't be. And I could probably pull them off right now, but we're going to do it after the soaking. And then we're going to do some all the nail, all ten toes, nail clipping. And we'll see how it goes. Let's put it in a bath and then we'll give her a few minutes in the bath and we'll bring it back out to cut the nails. This is one reason you want to put claws because <laughs> they don't mean to claw you, it's just all they got to work with. So alright. And they don't always like it. You know, they're not they're not an aquatic animal. They run the water for refuge. And uh that's, you know, and they like to stand over water for using the bathroom and they actually might use the bathroom and get ready for a mess. That's why I kind of try to spray her down before we get her in the water. Because sometimes when you spray them down, they'll go ahead and defecate in the cage. So when you got them in your bathtub, all you got to worry about is shedding skin. Alright, so now we soaked for a few minutes and I couldn't help myself. I was in there playing with her and I got the dorsal spikes that were left on there from the last couple of sheds. It looks like I got I gotta keep an eye on her one more time. See how foggy those are? They are, uh, they'll be ready to shed again. So usually how I do this with my iguanas is I let them grow for quite some time to get a way less nervous and I don't risk the chance of them bashing their face in when they're young. They get a little older, they're a little braver, and uh, not so hard to work with once you get them out the cage you know desensitizing them let them know being touched is okay also i wanted to point out the pattern on this one because she is el salvador el salvadorians usually have this crazy little marbling pattern all throughout the body as a lot of your colombians are kind of more of a solid and then bright orange this is a female again and you'll notice with uh the blue uh coloration also probably came from el salvador because they also have similar marbling throughout the body and so are one of my uh, hypos I'm going to say it also came from a El Salvadorian locality so it leaves us questioning what other localities belong to what where there is a Colombian locality at Albino which we saw earlier now I'm curious to the T positive Albino I have to do a little bit more research to see where that one came from so right now what we're going to do now is start clipping nails now sometimes once you're going to get used to this and yes these are normal nail clippers just be sure to turn them sideways can you get close up of that this does not hurt them as long as you get the very tips i don't go in there that white part you see on there if we can zoom in on that okay is it coming in clear right 
So don't put it. <laughs> I can't see. Just the tip. Right here, just the sharp part for now. Until they get used to this, just going through the motions. And this will last you. See, look at there. We got. Can we get that one? She's pretty and pretty good. Pretty. No, uh oh. When they jerk away is when it starts getting. You don't want to. So now what I'm going to do is show y'all if she wasn't as calm. He's having trouble because the one thing you got to be able to do is work with these guys. You got to be able to handle them. And if they're cutting you to pieces, then that makes you not want to do it. And they leave them in a cage and then they really don't tame up. So let's do a nice, safe, easy little burrito. Like any of y'all had children, you know what I'm talking about. Baby burritos. Try to get her up and facing away from me. Like so. All right. Her feet are like Velcro, and right over the head. Because like many bird species, these guys will, for the most part, remain calm. And if they don't, all you gotta do is put your hand on the back of them, and you want them nice and snug. And so, you're not hurting them, they're not hurting you. And you just put your hand back there, because they want to go backwards. They got something on their in front of them. They want to go backwards. So now I have a manageable handle. I have, she was manageable before. I'm just showing you this how I do it. So now get the little leg out here, and you probably help. You see how sharp? Look how sharp those. You see it against the, the towel. The suckers are just needle needles tear into you. And I'm not a big fan of cutting too much off. I don't like to see my iguanas bleed. But they will heal. It, it, it'll be alright. I mean, you could take some cornstarch and shove it in the nail if you cut too much. Or that stuff they have for birds. And you're clipping feathers and uh, claws or talons for the bird species. I forget what it's called. Packing powder. See, and no squirming until I just said it. But then, I don't have her tight either. See, so watch. Boom. She's okay. She's, she's kind of confused about what just happened. But she doesn't hate you for it. She's like, dude, did you see that? I just got smothered by this magical thing that's blue. Or whatever. Oh, man. Okay, so now I have a wet towel. Alright, so where do we go? We got the right side. Now can we can we do the left side? Come on. Be prepared to take some time with your animal. A lot of people get in a hurry. I got a lot of these, so to tame them all fairly, it doesn't really take that much time. Okay. Mm. No, I, I didn't, did I? Alright, so now, to this side, if she'll stay still. Now when I do cut the nails with these types, this is not in a dog or an animal, but I like to cut it sideways and do the rounded part. So the claw, even if I take this tiny bit, it rounds it off to where the point's gone. So you see the rounding right here, you turn it sideways like that. So we are down, so we have gotten three paws, claws, well, 15 claws, uh, three paws. I'm trying to wish, keep track which ones are I think I did that one. So, this is a good position to get this one right here. So, you guys might have to bear with me. So this one to get it done so she's not too much aggravated with me. This is the first time I've had her out. 
not the first time I've had out, out like forever, but this is, it's been a while, because I like for them to grow. They just become a little tamer with age. You know, so there we go. That was 20 calls, four balls, one iguana. That was bathed, and you can soak them as long as you like. You can also, can't go wrong with 100% cold water. But you can go wrong with 100% hot water. Keep that in mind when you're keeping the temperature up. She's a beautiful mama. I have an adult double head who's a head for El Salvador and Colombian uh, albino uh, localities. And it's Baltimore, if you guys remember off from my other ones. And this one, she'll be ready to she'll be ready to, to do some breeding next year. I was a little worried, thinking she'd grow slow. But she is definitely growing fast. Uh, and I'm just really super excited. Like I said, I got this. Oh, look right here real quick. Right here. A little bit of blood at the tip. That happens. Okay? Don't people freak out. I get people all like, should I take it to the vet? No, it's, it's okay. It'll heal up. But I do need to stay on top of the shedding and uh, watch that. That's a little bit on my bed. But, I mean, no worse for wear here. She's fine. She's beautiful, actually. When I first got her, she got a secondary infection from being stressed and lost her tail from right here. And now it's this long and about five months. And I did, I, I did do an amputation on the tip of the tail to get a good clean break because it kind of just I, I don't know, I just got infected and she was losing some. It wasn't dehydration. I mean, I just because she didn't like, she didn't do well with the traveling. The guy I got it from takes excellent care of his animals. And uh, so, here we are. One female girl looking gorgeous, looking curious, and looking tame. I thank all y'all for subscribing to my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please look down there in the big red sign that says subscribe and push it and like my video as well, or don't like it. Either way, it goes into an algorithm and other people who are thirsting to know about iguanas will get to see it. So, I am not doing a lot of videos at the moment because we are doing so much with uh, just breeding, keeping up with the feeding and cleaning and egg laying. And uh, I've been uh, changing jobs and all sorts of stuff going on, but we will keep you posted. Do have some eggs coming up to hatch shortly. So like again, thank you guys for watching. Any questions, leave them below. You can hit me up at CrazyScales69 on uh, Instagram. DM me there. I'm usually pretty relatively available. Most people will tell you that I'll answer you right, right away. All right, guys. Enjoy and be safe. Bye.